three, two, one, go. It's known as the last great race on earth. The Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is a 10-day, 1,600-kilometer test of endurance across Alaska's beautiful wilderness. Here, the Arctic temperatures can drop so low that exposed flesh freezes in seconds. The trail's route, which starts in the state's largest city, Anchorage, and finishes in Nome on the coast of the Bering Sea, is steeped in folklore. Originally used during the Alaskan Gold Rush, the trail became a lifeline in 1925 when medical supplies were transported on it following a diphtheria epidemic that threatened the children of Nome. The Iditarod race was created in 1973 to commemorate the heroics of the mushers back then and has become the state's most popular sporting occasion. Each March, a small group of men and women from all walks of life attempt it. And while the majority of the 50 or so mushers and their dogs hail from Alaska, the Iditarod has also attracted sled dog teams from beyond American shores. Gata Kurochet was the first South American to enter the prestigious race. I think the Iditarod is an amazing experience. Despite what people say about how difficult it is, how cold it is and how hard you have to work, it's fantastic. I understand that the conditions make it a harsh race, but you're in such a beautiful place that it's simply marvellous. Pedro El Gato Corochet comes from Argentina, a country where football is king. But when he was growing up, he was fascinated by the adventure novels of Jack London, like The Call of the Wild and White Fang. My desire to go to Alaska goes back to my childhood. When I was a boy, I didn't even know where Alaska was, but I'd always wanted to go there. I became obsessed by it and began reading and learning as much as I could about it. At the age of 19, he left his home in Tandil, about 360 kilometers south of Buenos Aires, and boarded a ship bound for Alaska, hoping to see the places he'd only read about. However, when the ship stopped in Ushuaia, on the southern tip of Argentina, Gato was so captivated by the beautiful Tierra del Fuego landscape that he missed the boat that was heading north to Alaska. He decided to stay in Ushuaia, and in 1990 started up his own kennel and began mushing after purchasing a team of 13 dogs for 8,000 US dollars. The dogs were a mixture of Alaskan Malamutes and Siberian Huskies, the standard breeds used on the Iditarod. But Gatto crossbred them with an Arctic wolf he had. These days he has around 75 dogs at his kennel, appropriately named Valle de Lobos, the Valley of the Wolves. Three years after he took up the sport, Gatto, whose nickname means the cat, finally made it to Alaska. That's when he met Joe Reddington, the man known as the father of Iditarod. He taught me a lot, and I learned so many things from him. Just spending a few days with him helped me to improve my knowledge and skills on how to work with the dogs. He taught me about the different breeds of dog, what to feed them, how to work with them in training and so on. I remember also that he said to me, one day you'll participate in the Iditarod. At the time I never thought that it would be possible. Reddington's prediction came true in 2001 after Kurochet finished 15th in the Upper Peninsula 200 race and qualified for the Iditarod. Unfortunately, he was forced to retire at the 1000 km mark after he and his team fell into a frozen river. Competing in the Iditarod is the greatest thing of all. It was a wonderful experience to be able to take part. The race was so enriching for me. I can't say anything bad about it because despite all the difficulties I had, the experience was amazing.
The financial crisis in Argentina put an end to Gatto's hopes of attempting another Iditarod. It was impossible to find the 50,000 US dollars needed to transport his dogs to Alaska and run a team in the race. Despite this setback, he continued to develop and train his dogs, and the hard work soon paid off. In 2007, his nephew, Hernan Maquiera, who had been working with him at the kennel since he was 18, became the first South American to actually finish the race. Success is only achieved by persevering. There are good times, there are bad times, and even very hard times when you question why you're doing this. Nevertheless, if you have faith in what you're doing, then you can do anything. Gatto's exploits and know-how with his dogs have brought him worldwide acclaim. Now, numerous mushers from all corners of the globe travel to Ushuaia to learn from the master. The 57-year-old also wants to develop the sport at a grassroots level in his homeland. He's one of the co-founders of the Ushuaia Sled Dog Race, an international event staged every year on his doorstep, and he regularly holds sled dog workshops for the visually impaired and classes for children aged 6 to 14. I try to teach everything I know. I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave my knowledge behind. Otherwise, the art will die out here in Tierra del Fuego because the place will be spoiled by tourism. Having a race here makes the idea of keeping dogs something special and means the area won't just be a tourist attraction. For the past 20 years, Gatto has been living his childhood dream. He's self-sufficient and built his own house and his dog's kennels himself. For him, looking after 75 dogs is not a chore, but rather a labour of love. It offers you a wonderful life and the chance to develop an activity with your animals beyond the work you already do with them at the kennels. And it allows you to really enjoy the great outdoors. They say that more people have climbed Everest than have completed the Iditarod, but the flame of desire still burns in this Argentinian heart. And while it continues to beat, Gato Corochet is still in with a chance of completing the last great race on earth. It was great being able to race the Iditarod. It changed me. I get excited thinking about it because I really want to do it again. It's a dream I'd like to make happen. It'll be difficult because of the money involved, but maybe if I win the lottery, who knows.